And I'm coming from um, John chapter 6 and verses 12 through 13. And y'all know the story about the five loaves and two fish. But see, there were two parts. And I, and I want to talk about making good use of leftovers. Making good use of leftovers. And, and before I get started, what I like to do is, 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 is pray before I get started. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for each and every family that's here this morning, Lord, that you will just continue to bless them, bless their families, Lord. Watch over them, guide them in a way that only you know they can go. And Lord, I pray that all the words that come out of my mouth be all of you and not of me. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, amen. amen. Now, uh, what I want to say this morning my family is here, but they said, my daughter said, Daddy, don't, please don't make me stand up no more. But they stood up. They're right there. Stand up anyway. <laughs> that's, my, that's my wife, my daughter, and my son. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to hear it when we're driving home. Dad, you said you weren't going to make us stand up. Yeah, okay. I'm the daddy, so... You know, sometimes I can say okay, and sometimes I just have to do how dad is supposed to do. But what I want to share this morning, in John chapter 6, 12 and 13, see, 12 and 13 gives us the second part of how Jesus made good use of the leftovers. See, but when you go up to uh, verse number 7, and the disciples were, they, they, they were confused. Because they had so many people there to come see Jesus. And, and, and they didn't know what they were going to do. How are we going to feed these people with this little piece of change we got? And so, and if you read in verse number 8, it said, One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter, brother, said unto him, There's a lad here. There's a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? He said, this is all he got. How is this going to suffice? And Jesus said, bring it here. Let me show you. And so with them five loaves and two fish. See, he brought it. And then he told the disciples, he said, make them all sit down. 5,000 people, men, women, and children. He said, make them sit down. He said, bring me. The leftover. Now, we don't know the little boy's name. We don't know where he came from. We don't know if his, if his mama fixed him more than that before he left that morning. But the end result, we know he had five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring it here. Bring me the leftovers. And they brought it to him. He told them, line up. He said, I want you to line. I want y'all to line up. And as he went to start dipping his hands in that basket... He was bringing out them fish sandwiches so fast till they couldn't keep up uh, uh, feeding the people. They couldn't, couldn't keep up. They couldn't keep up. Every time he dip his hand in there, he come out with a, a gang of fish sandwiches. Here, take them, feed them. And then in the end, when verse 12 and 13, he said, and when they were filled, when they were filled, 5,000 people, Five loaves and two fish when they were filled. And y'all know when you get full, you wrap back and you say, boy, that was, that was, I done had enough. I'm full. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragment of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Now, we don't know what he did with those leftovers, but we know Jesus, and we know he did something good with it, whether he took it and fed the, the, the widows, whether he, he took it and was using it for the rest of their trip, or if he was taking it to feed the less fortunate, but we know he did something with it. And see, what I want to share with you this morning is that, see, when I was I was down on my luck. See, I don't have a problem telling people I was strung out on drugs and alcohol. 
I don't have a problem saying it. I don't have a problem saying that I slept in the streets. I don't have a problem saying that I robbed folks and stole and slept in dirty alleys. See, I don't have a problem saying I ate out the dumpster. See, I don't have a problem telling you that. You see? And, and, and at that time, I was in the church. I was in the church. Went to, at the time, they had uh, the Crusade for Christ in West Dallas back in the late 90s. And my friend of mine convinced me to come. I didn't want to go. But she said, listen, your life is going down the tubes. Where else can you go? And I went to the Crusade, and I got baptized. And they took me down to West Dallas Church of Christ, West Dallas, and baptized me. But guess what? See, baptism ain't nothing if your mind ain't right. You understand what I'm saying? Baptism don't mean nothing if your mind ain't right. And see, and I came up out the water the same way I went down. See, nothing had changed because my mind wasn't right. See, I didn't, I didn't go through a transformation because I didn't understand what transformation meant. And so when the Bible tells us you can't serve two masters, you can't serve God and serve the streets. And I, and, and I tried to, understand me, I tried to serve God and serve the streets. After being up all night long, Monday and Tuesday, and then trying to go in a Bible study Wednesday, leave out a Bible study, and go back to getting high and drinking Wednesday night, and then stand up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then trying to walk up in church Sunday morning like ain't nothing happening. Some people walk up in here this morning like ain't nothing happening. And you know something is happening in your life, but you could come in here and act like ain't nothing happening because you think don't nobody see it. But guess what? I don't care if you think I don't see it, but guess what? God sees it. So you can't walk in here like you ain't done nothing bad last night. And going to walk in here and sing hallelujah like everything is okay. So you can't do it like that. And I'm here to tell you that it don't work like that. Because you can't get the fullness of God when you come in like it ain't nothing happening. And see, I wasn't getting the fullness of God. That's why I stayed in the streets. And I couldn't keep coming in and being a hypocrite. So I couldn't keep coming in being a hypocrite. And so I left the church for the streets. I traded my family for the streets. I left my family for the streets. I left my house for the streets. I left the comfort of a king-sized bed for an old, dirty alley, sleeping on an old, dirty mattress under some old, dirty blankets. See, I traded all of that for the streets. And when when I was down on my luck, and see, I was in the church, and I was always taught that the Church of Christ care about their folks. And I was mad at the church. Understand me, I was mad at the church because when I was downtown, I didn't see a Church of Christ coming to feed nobody. I didn't see them then. But one day I walked down there, I saw a little white van. I saw a little white van pull up on the corner that said Mountain View Church of Christ. And I said, There they go. And I walked over there, and I told them. I got at the end of the line, and when I got up there, I said, I'm so glad to see y'all. And they was looking at me like, what do you mean? I said, hey, I'm Brother Price. I'm in the church, but I'm out here in the streets. Well, come on, brother. Take this sack lunch and eat and fill your stomach up. And I don't know if y'all, when y'all fix those sack lunches that morning, if y'all counted how many they brought back. But guess what? After all the people was gone, Brother Price, come here. We got a few extra. Here goes some leftovers right. for you. Because right. guess what? They knew I was going to make good use of the leftovers. All right. All right. And then they would come pick me up in the, in the, in the, 
in the, I call it a, a tour bus. <laughs> when y'all had the tour bus, and they would come get me, and in the fellowship hall, when y'all used to uh, put them round tables out and had them big meals, and they'd come get me. Come on, Brother Bryce, come on. Let's, I'm going to take you to go get you something to eat. And they brought me up here to feed me. Not only physical food, but they gave me some spiritual food. All right, all right. And they gave me some hope. See, like Brother Hamilton said, you never know what ministry is going to do in somebody's life. Yes. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. But don't think what you do for God is in vain. Because it's not. And see, I would come up here, and I would get a little hope. And then I'd go back down there and, you know, do my thing and, and, just, and just keep going. But you know what happened? Sometimes God got to take you to a place yes. Yes. where you got to sit down yes. and be quiet yeah. and listen. You see, I wondered why I kept picking up the drugs. I wonder why I kept picking up the alcohol. I wonder why I kept forging checks. I wonder why I kept stealing. And you know why? Because I left the drugs. See, I left the drugs over here. So I left them over there. See, and then the alcohol I left over here. The stealing I left over there. See, and the robbing I left over there. You see? But when I was locked up, see, I had a chance to get my life together right, and right, understand right. why I couldn't leave it alone. Because when you just put it down right here and just leave it over there, guess what? It ain't going nowhere. And when times get hard, you know what you do? I'm going back over here. And I'm getting this. And I need to go over here because I, I, I can't pick this up and not pick that up. Because see, this supports that. You see what I'm saying? And the stealing supports this. And so I, had to, I, I would go back and pick it back up. But when I was locked up and had a chance to read God's word and understand what God was telling me about, he was telling me the same thing he told the disciples to go and get those leftovers and bring it to me. See, he, he was letting me know, hey, hey, Brother Price, you cannot just leave it sitting. Go pick it up. Go pick it up. Go pick the drugs up. Go pick the alcohol up. Go pick the robbing up. Go pick the stealing up. And come bring it to me. You see, y'all sang a song this morning that said, I stand before you. And see, and I took it to him. And I stood before him, and I gave it to him. All right. And see, and when you give it to him, for real. Because when you give it to him, ain't no take backs. Right. See, if you take it back, you know what that means? You didn't give it to him for real. Because you didn't want to give it up. But see, when you give it to him for real, you can't take it back. Because he won't let you take it back. And when you make up your mind to not want it back, then you don't get it back. You see, and my mind was made up. You see, I understood what that transforming of the mind meant. My mind was made up. And so when I was locked up, and I started reading more and studying more, and when people would come, and I was locked up, right, in Texarkana, Texas. And, and people would come, the prison ministry would come, and they would, they would, we would have lessons. And then uh, one, one, one of the preachers said, man, I wish I had what you got. And I was like, what is this that he don't want what I got? He don't want this. But see, some people see in you what you don't see in yourself. And when they tell you that, you may not believe. But see, when I was sleeping in the alleys, where anybody could walk by me at any given time and crush my skull. But God kept me alive. See, that's that grace and mercy that God sheds on all of us. 
See, that, it was that grace and mercy that kept me alive. Why? Because in his mind, not mine, his, I ain't finished with you yet. I can't let nothing happen to you because I got something better for you later on down the line. And I need you to be alive. I need your mind to be transformed so you can do the things that I want you to do. Not what I want to do, what he wants me to do. And I'm here today. I'm here today. Because of the grace and mercy Amen. of God. Amen. And guess what? During that whole time, me and my family, we were separated for three whole years. So let me tell you something. Don't think that when you're separate from your family, that it can't get put back together. All right. It can get put back together. Amen. But you got to let God put it back together. Amen. See, sometimes we want to put it back together. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. Honey, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Lord, get me ready for the reunion. Because I know it's coming. And I would call my wife. And you know what? She would start to say, how you doing? And I would tell her. And she would say, you sound different. Mm -hmm. See, that was the God. That was the spirit of God letting her know that I'm getting him ready to come home. I'm getting him ready to come home. And when that time came for me to get out of jail, I called and told her, I'm getting out. And she said, you could come home. But she gave me a stipulation, though. Y'all know how I go. You can come home, but don't come up here with that mess. Because the minute you do, I'm putting you out. And I said, okay. And God, I got out. I took a long bus ride from Texas, Canada to, to Fayetteville, North Carolina. And after I was there about Three years, God blessed me and said, I'm ready for you to move into being an evangelist for a church. Amen. And I was like, you know, if I'm ready for that, you ain't got no choice. <laughs> because where you come from and where I brought you to, uh -huh. see, I need you in a place where you can tell people that. I need you in a place where when they hear that, they can get some hope based on what they going through. See, some of y'all may be going through some stuff that's far less than what God brought me through. But see, when you can, when you can see the results of the power of God, Amen. see, and, 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 and then you look at yourself and say, you know what, let me stop tripping. Because if God brought that man through that, those situations, this little old thing I'm tripping on, I need to just give it to him. I need to go pick it up. What I left over there. I need to go pick it up. I need to bring it. And I need to stand before him. I need to stand before him. And I need to give it to him. And sometimes I need to just sit myself down and be still and know that God is God. Amen. And what I'm here to tell you this morning, if you sit down and you listen to what God is telling you, then guess what? He'll let you know where he wants you to go. But when things are going wrong in your life, See, don't think it's too big for God. Amen. See, that's what the disciples' problem was. See, they had saw him heal, bring one man from, the, from, de from death. He, he, he gave another man sight. And with this 5,000 in their mind, they thought this was too much. And sometimes, guess what? We think that our problems are too big for God. 
Sometimes we think it's too big, because I know when I was out there, I thought it was too big for him. But he proved me wrong. And so he could prove you wrong. So you just got to give it to him. You see? And, 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 and this is, you know, the Bible said, I'm not boasting on myself. See, I'm boasting on the Lord. Amen. See, my boast is in the Lord. Amen. So I'm giving him all the credit. Because see, what you see here this morning, what you see here this morning is the power of Jesus Christ. Right. You see, it ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with these clothes I got on. Yeah. Nothing to do with that. It's all because the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, that's what this is all about. And guess what? See, being out there and in and, 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 and I got a decent, my health is decent. Amen. My frame of mind is okay. Now, yeah, I forget some stuff sometimes. You know, but that comes with it. That comes with the age thing, I think. I forget some stuff. But guess what? I'm able to stand in front of y'all on two legs. I got two arms, you see, and I can talk. And you know what? You got some people who have gone through some stuff that can't do this. Amen. And I, I just want to, just like Mountain View gave me hope about 15 years ago. 15. My prayer this morning is that I have given you some hope. Amen. To let you know that there's nothing in your life that God cannot fix. It's nothing he can't fix. And saying we got to have faith enough in God to know that he can fix it. Because when you hear from the word of God, then you know it's true. Amen. See, faith coming by hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. So when I hear the word of God, I have to have faith in the word of God that is true. And what you hear in this morning, it ain't, this is what God put on my heart to give you this morning. All right. And saying you got to have faith that it can work for you. Because it can take me out to quicksand. So it's hard to pull somebody out of quicksand. And if you could take me out to quicksand, then guess what? Some of y'all ain't even in the quicksand yet. And he could take you out of whatever you in. He can take you out of that. But if you don't give it to him, he won't take you out. If you don't stand before him and just turn it over to him. Surrender. Surrender means to give it up. Give it up. Don't hold it. Because holding it ain't going to let you move forward. Holding it is like an anchor that's holding you back. You see, so don't hold it. Give it up. Give it to him. Let him have it. He said, what? Cast all your cares on me. He means that. He means it. And see, and I know some that may have come in here this morning, y'all need to pick up that stuff. Go pick it up. Go pick that stuff up, that stuff that you done left over here and left over there and think. Oh, okay, it's, I'm just going to leave it over there. Go pick it up. Go pick it up and bring it to God. Bring it to him. And I, and I guarantee you he'll fix it. Amen. See, I put, this is my dominant hand, my right hand. I put this right hand on the chopping block, risk it to get cut off. And saying to you that if you do this, if you do it right, God will take it away from you. How many people are going to put their hand on the top of it and say to you, if you do this, I guarantee God will take it away from you. But you got to be serious when you do it. So you just can't do it and say, oh, just take it away today and I won't do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow come and you're back in the same boat. Say, I don't know where you are this morning. I don't. But you do. And God know where you at this morning. He know where you at. 
and saying he's calling for you to go pick it up. You've heard it. You heard one of your brothers in Christ stand before you and say he went and picked it up. He brought his leftovers to me and look where he is. See, he's telling you this morning, you see what? I took that brother out the street. I brought him into church and gave him a seat. And then I brought him before you to let him preach. That's what he can do for you. So what I'm asking you this morning, if you're not a Christian, then it's time for you to put on Christ and baptism. See, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you heard what God word, God word this morning. Then it says in, in, in Hebrews 11 and 6, you got to believe it. He says, for without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not sometimes seek him. Diligently seek him. See, when you diligently seek somebody, you're doing it with everything you got. He said, diligently seek him. And then he said, you got to repent, Acts uh, 2, 37 and 38. He says, said, uh, the scripture says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? See, when they heard the word, they were pricked in their hearts. See, that's what the word would do to you. It will prick you in your heart to where you're going to stand up and say, brothers, what shall I do? And then Peter replied to them, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then you have to confess. Romans 10, 9 said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And then last but not least, you got to be baptized, Mark 16, 16. See, you got to, in order to get rid of it, see, you got to. You got to let the blood of Jesus Christ cover you. Amen. That's the only way it's going to be taken away. And Mark 16, 16 say, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be condemned. But see, the question to you this morning, do you, do you, do you have some leftovers that you done left over here, there, and everywhere that you need to pick up this morning? And bring it down here and give it to Christ. Because I guarantee you when you give it to him, guess what? You're going to have to put some anchors on to keep you from flying high. Because the weight of the world it would be lifted off you. So I just, I just thank you so much. I thank Brother Hamilton so much for allowing me to come share this with you. Because see, when he... When he send you through that furnace, it's just like a diamond. When you find a diamond, it's all dirt. But when he send you through the furnace and put that fire on you, and when you come out on the other side, you like brand new money. See, you like brand new money. Let him make you brand new this morning. Give it up. Come stand before him as these brothers uh, sing the song of invitation. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation.